Yo, welcome to Small Mouth Crush Live with my co-host, Epic Eric. I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I'm really excited to be here tonight. Looking forward to the show. Wow. You shot out of a cannon. Oh, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to toast. I want everybody to raise their glass, raise their beverage. If you're drinking one at home, this is a strong bow. Apple cider. It's our newest sponsor of the show. No, it's not. I'm just drinking it tonight. Travis has a non-alcoholic fizzy lifting drink, but maybe he's got something. You got a whole case of it ready to go. So I'm going to toast Travis, man. Travis, without you, yes. bro, I don't connect to this fishing community like I do. I want to thank you for having me on this show for all these years, taking me fishing, arguing like a brother with me, getting mm. into a deep, Turning me on to some legendary waters and smallmouth. Man, it's changed my world, and I'm grateful. Thank you. And I'm grateful uh, for you because without you. A toast to Travis, everybody. A toast. We're going to toast you first. Click the glass, and let's have a sip. Right. Let's move No, you got to take oh, a drink. Yeah, you got to. Mm. It's about my 10th can <sighs> this afternoon. This is my first strong bow in a while, man. And it, I'm got to tell you, it's crisp. Bow. It's refreshing. I see you're wearing mm. the lid, man. I am. Uh, <laughs> I, hey, Kent. Kent's here. South Jersey, what up? Brian's uh, toasting the virtual glass. I like it. I was going to wear this hat. Yeah. But it's the fitted kind. and It doesn't fit me. I don't like fitted hats, man. Cause I got a, I got a wider noodle than most. I think you can buy them in sizes, but like one size sure. fits most on the fitted. It it's too tight on my noodle, man. I can't take it. Kills me. Oh man. Oh, I see you got that monster bass Mountain Dew shirt. That'll be mine. I want to bid. Hold on. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. We gotta find tonight's sponsor. There he is. There's Marine guys. Listen. What? If you're in the market. For a new boat, bass boat. I'm getting my lung there. Oh, really? Ayers Marine. Give are you buying a, a used one? Or are you going to get a new one? Well, hmm. what have you arrived on, man? We got to have the update on the lung because that's the key piece well, of equipment. The whole, the whole update on all the boats is my Camus is for sale right now. Mm -hmm. Lowered the price. Okay. Okay. What's it? What's it selling for now? What's the price? More, more in line with what it should be. Okay. Got it. You can head on over to BassBoatCentral.com and see it. Look up Camus, and you'll see it. It should be at the top there. Okay. Fully loaded, ready to go. My new Camus should be arriving any day. Hmm. Whoa. Yeah. That's are you kidding me? Like at theirs coming well, in, and you're gonna I'm ex you're gonna. I'm ex I'm expecting a phone call any day. Are Do you going to take? No. To come in? No, not yet. Uh, if it comes in like next week, will you drive up and get it and break it in on the upper bay and we could do some blade bait fishing? No, or something? no. I got to <laughs> get it rigged yet. It's going to take. Oh, uh, oh yeah, you're right. You're going to have to drive it down south, do all that stuff. Um, maybe, maybe. Are Are you going to take it to the same place? I don't know yet. Haven't decided. Okay. Gotcha. I haven't man. decided, but the. Uh, we're putting in an order for a lunch. So I'm, I go back and forth daily on that on that new lunch. 
but uh meaning new versus used or just a long yeah, I, a used one okay. came up a used one came up this week how many and, hours uh, on the motor would you say uh, what year so none of that really matters i don't i could care less how many hours uh, but they had a 115 mercury that's, pro xs so a little advanced. underpowered well not crazy right but but it was it was definitely used okay and i know how i get even though i'm going to beat it up a little bit sure i just i have really big plans for this new lund using it in a variety of different ways and so sure. i just i'm going to stick I see what with you're saying. that's all okay it's going to be what's a boat the, that I'll, I'll have for a very long time so okay fair enough what's the price differential just out of curiosity for the used versus the new that you're contemplating well so okay i, I mean it's a I fair did, question it is a fair question so it 20? was a pretty big difference yeah yeah 20 or 30. let's go with 20. 20 plus tax so it's an extra 20 plus tax you know call it well i don't know what sales tax is up there or wherever you'd be buying it but um i don't know man does the 20k get you like a four by four and another important piece of guiding equipment because you could always buy a new lund and sell the used one when the cash starts coming in just a thought i'm putting down riggers on this i have rot really nice rod holders coming i have a rod tree coming uh, okay I, I have i i need it to work i so it doesn't have all the small things like i know it sounds stupid but like you know a spare bilge pump or a the carpet was peeling up in, inside the lids like it just it wasn't it it, it didn't feel right and plus i should say Fair. this it came with a i believe a honda or a yamaha Ooh, good engines. and so and well, I mean, so i had is like one of the best right right but since i'm aligned real well with mercury i i, I would choose uh... to uh i got a quote to put a brand new 115 on it and so that bumped it up to just under ten thousand, a little less versus yeah. a new one and i believe well, you would this sell you would sell the old one right oh or would you keep the uh you that gonna... was he gave you know how dealers are some dealers this this uh, dealer in michigan was like well here's if we keep the motor you know I they see. uh they he's making some money. he's playing yeah he's playing with the numbers i got you okay that's yeah. fair man dude you got to do what you think is right who i mean there's no question you're going to be happier with a new boat i mean that yeah. i know and you. plus if it's I mean, going to be it's... like it's not a boat i'm going to be trading you know flipping every year like my bass boat so right i think it's a good thing i'm really excited i know i can't stress this enough about all the things that are kind of moving forward quick here but just all these new adventures and uh, honestly, so I was up until about 2 a.m. last night mm -hmm. uh, getting all my ice fishing jigs. It's so weird. Prepped. I, those things are so tiny. Like, Oh, Brian's my God, custom, dude, the 2.5 millimeter? B Brian's custom tackle, who we've had on, uh, he was on Jig Squad, and I was with him with Cuda. And uh, he's the guy that ties my everlasting drop shotter. Um mm -hmm. And uh, he's doing another round, and um, I, he posted some ice jigs. They're so cool looking; it makes me want to ice fish because they're like candy. I almost, and then there's, I, like, I almost, there's like UV ones and glow yeah. in the dark stuff. It's crazy. So, so I'd like to hear in the comments. I know a lot of our viewers are not not all of them are ice anglers, right? But I know a lot of you guys are, and so let me know in the comments some videos and some people to watch. I've been watching some. There's some fantastic YouTube videos. Uh, of guys out there and then there's a lot of youtubers that are great but they're aligned with specific companies in the ice fishing industry that's something i've noticed so you're either northland tackle or you're you know what i mean and then that's all you talk about is northland tackle products right right when there's so much amazing equipment that's out there so i see the play that these guys are doing which is fine that's how 95 percent of anglers and sponsors are 
sure. so you guys know me i'm going to find products that i'm going to gravitate towards and that are going to work and that i'm going to fall in love with on the ice side same thing with the salmon and trout anyways it's fascinating so i'm literally sitting here till 2 a.m rigging up my ice rods uh not ice rods but my, my baits and then i'm watching youtube videos learning how to and then i'm writing notes dude my desk was full of crap and the next thing you know i'm ordering all this stuff and now i can't <laughs> find the uh the tungsten punch jigs anywhere in the 332nd oh, ounce size so i'm going through every website dude i'm looking on ebay i'm on amazon and then oh, i finally found a couple and of course they don't have like you know white chartreuse or something so it's like it's crazy right yeah Try to find the Northland Tackle punch jig in a 332nd and then find the skeleton plastic to put on it. And then go watch one of them bro bro videos, whatever that guy's name is, bro. I don't know. <laughs> he reminds me of Dirty Steve. Somebody uh, said watch cra Crappy Chronicles. Yeah, there you go. Real rough around the edge guy, but he's okay. out there just jacking on them. Uh, we do have to do a giveaway tonight, guys, because I think we missed one. The week before and you're gonna love this giveaway so i want to get that and now i want to learn what's new at the bass lab as well eric if sure. you give me one second here uh yeah, no you problem, guys man. a lot of you that are that follow the channel are know how this goes so every dollar that you donate through the super chat and i'm not sure how you sign up you can go on youtube and figure that out while we're talking if you if you're interested but every super chat we you put your name in a drawing at the end of the the deal here i keep track and then uh we pick a winner random winner um and i threw some goodies I, I threw some goodies in here awesome man i'm doing a giveaway tonight too come on I, i'm giving i'm giving away one of my cold water killer boxes for right. everybody that orders during cyber week i'm not just doing a day i it's, i think it's the i've only done one sale before i think so this mm. is my cyber deal and uh it's 15 percent off when you spend 75 or more site wide and uh well, so everything's included bro and well, then i'm, I'm gonna, gonna put your information up instead of uh talking about my giveaway <laughs> since you just oh. hijacked that part of the show <laughs> oh yeah you were struggling on finding stuff where is it i wasn't i was looking for a piece of paper bud oh well i was good i was trying to fill while you were looking i you seem to be searching continue okay well i feel i'm sorry <laughs> oh no big deal <laughs> Happens more than I care to admit. Uh, very much so. I'm a talker, bro. So my cold water killers pack, which is a $94.99 value. Some of my favorite cold water baits. Let's and see I'm what you got in there. Can you can you share with us? Um, it's it's listed on the site. Uh, I have to go in the other room and get the right. I just have one oh, of that's these. That's not even the real box. That's just a fake no. Box. That's it's, like it's me over in saying, there. Here you guys go. <laughs> but you got to hold it. You're upside down. You're upside down. <laughs> so 15% off, 75 or more, and then I'm going to do it. And it's all week long until next Monday show. And then on the show, I'll do a giveaway for everybody who placed an order. Mm. How about that? Hey, so listen. The, ever, the everlasting drop shotters are back in stock in Black Finally. Knight. And those things sold Finally. out like instantly, man. So for, mm -hmm. for those of you guys who don't know what the everlasting drop shotter is, it's my sneaky little collab with brian's custom tackle i'll go get a sample and i'll bring in the cold water killers box so mm. anyway there you go man bastard yeah. mike wants to know why are his super chats not whole dollar amounts like they're dollar 99 299 399 mj's 9.99 we don't Kyle know Dowdy says buy an empty box for the low price 85 i'll be right um back. yeah first of all i just want to give a shout out to everybody here a lot of a lot of regulars jig squad travis Kent, Hoffa, South Jersey, Tim, Burn. Haven't seen Burn in a while. Somatis, Basser Mike, Lucky D. All the usuals so here, are here. Here's the real box. So first I want to show an everlasting drop shot. Pretty cool, man. So they're just straight black, this last run that I had. But I'll show you a black Sean. and shark truce. Sean's only missed like one live in the last He's a, four years. The, the dude is unbelievable. So here's the everlasting drop shotter. 
I think he's a so, bot. It's just a bot, man. I told you that before. Right. So that's tied on a BS Stinger, Gamakatsu, and the new version is going to have the nano coated hook. So stepped up hook for you guys. Three layers of marabou. I mean, it's got also it's got some it's got some round living rubber esque material in it, but it's silicone. It's not rubber. And then just a hint of crystal oh, flash. Man. Can you see the crystal flash in there? Yeah, oh, like man. four strands of it. So, and this tail is indestructo, guys. Indestructo. That's why I call it the everlasting drop shotter. So, a lot of action in the tank. I've got a video on yeah. the. Uh, yeah, you guys have seen it on my Insta if you've looked. So these kind of flew out the door. Um, incredible. So they're going to be up all in Black Knight, which is an all-black version. So Travis knows the power of a black marabou. And, I sure uh, do. They're filthy. Filthy. No, nothing like it, really. David Brown. Hello, David Brown. Everybody. Dang, right, man. We're all here. Grat, 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 grat. We're going to have a little interesting uh, program tonight. What are we doing, it all, dude? It always gets interesting when we decide not to prepare for a show. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? We didn't talk to each other all week. Uh, nope. Didn't say a word. I was actually, was... Uh, I was going to be the, the bearer of bad news. Well, well I was what, hoping. What happened? What happened? I was hoping to have to be doing this show on the road while I was heading up to uh, upstate New to York right now. To close on the house? No, to catch a couple of fish. Wow, man. But where Nanny's are we going to go? Nanny's still sick. Oh, bummer, man. I know it's going to roll up tonight. Where are we going to go? Um, where are we going to try to fish? Like, tomorrow's supposed to be uh, pretty good weather up there. Okay. And so I wanted so you, to do that. You were headed. Dang. And then I was going to do a little steelhead fishing oh, uh, the rest, rest of the week. But were, were you going to wade for steelhead or were you going to just yeah, like be I was on gonna the go bait? hit the rivers? Go hit the rivers. Do you uh, have to wade for the steelhead, Travis, when you're up there? Or can you like just walk? You can walk. It's a lot better to have waders on. But yeah. Well, no, I, I know. I'm just wondering, you know, like, you know, if I could saunter along, you know, on the bank maybe. and maybe catch one. We can get you some waiters, but it ain't a big deal. It's not a bad guy waiters, bro. I've no, no, no. Hold up, hold up. I don't want to do it anymore. I know what you do. I know you got bad hips and all that stuff for knees. Or not hips, got. dude. No, exactly, okay. bro. But my point is, bad hips. <laughs> it's, it's, it would be wise just to have them. You can say I'm not going in, but just in case you have to walk in a couple, you know, walk across a little stream, or you come yeah. across something where it makes sense to have them. So just because. Yeah. I, I love to do that with you, but anyways, uh, let me get it dialed in first. I don't even know where I was going with the story. I guess my point is so. Bear, no, you uh, said bearer of bad news. Well, that we were going to have the show from the road. You were going to be in the studio, and I was going to be driving in the car oh, oh, in the got dark. It, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Because the show must go on. However, here I am. Right on. Boom. Ha hating life. <laughs> got another day in the office tomorrow. Hating life. <laughs> I hear you, man. Thursday's I know this blown, is bro. The, the season dude, closes December 1st. What? On this the is York the point. Side. This is the point where I start to walk around in circles in my house. Like, yes, just literally do I, circles in my house. I know what I get. I, get, I, know what's I get crazy. I know it's ahead of me this winter, so I'm I'm fine with it. I can't believe it's already December, but or neither or can I. On December, it's craziness. Right. Oh, gosh. Isn't December 1st Thursday? It is. Or is it Friday? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Huh. Unbelievable, man. Uh, Larry hey. Mancy, that drop shot that you saw, uh, it's the link that's right there. Basslab.bigcartel.com. And look for the everlasting drop shotter. And by the way, uh, just stocked up on June bugs are back in stock. If you missed out on the first run of the River Rat Spinnerbait, the June bugs are just back in stock. I got some chartreuse shed, shed nasty. Um in stock, I've got I've got some clear water. That's a chartreuse shad nasty. It's a three time winner spinner bait. Proud of it. Um, got some clear water killers, and got some freak shows. So, mm. and then that yeah, because they sell out pretty much as soon as they come in. Got a few crunk baits up. Trusty Rusty and a Strike King Series Five. I like that June one. Bug, June Bug, and then uh, some 3DI jigs. Which you guys, if you're if you're a Potomac River or Upper Bay fisherman. 
that's the color right there. That June bug with that little bit of crystal flash will do you right. You'll be thanking me later. Throw a chigger crawl three three and a half inch on there, and you'll be happy. And then some uh, some of the Mad Hatters, which are the Chatterbait version, same colors and uh, hard thumping, slow rolling. It's a great combination to add to your jackhammer because it, it it works mm. and operates and thumps differently. It's one of my favorite cold water baits. Nice. Early spring. Right on. Is it, is and, of course, a, apparel, dude. River Rat t-shirts. I mean, I don't know if anybody's new. Is anybody new tonight? Because I, I just assume people know, but I'm just going to show Please you. Please let us know if you are new. Don't yeah. be messing with us. I got beanies in stock. What? Beanies. Mm. This is beanie. It's beanie season, man. Speaking like of beanies, beanie I do too. have a. Uh, That's a. Cuff we do though. have an auction coming up soon. We haven't picked a date, but I promise you there will be some beanies in that auction. And this is the last thing: River Red T-shirts. Oh. Yes. Doctor Frankenstein T-shirts. Rise and Glide T-shirts. Let's go. Fifteen <laughs> percent off. Sight wide. Faster Mike. Faster Mike says he's new. Basser Mike, well, there you go, man. You just haven't saw we just heard about... his name before? I've seen Basser Mike on here before, man. Yeah, I'm not buying that Basser Mike. You got to throw the old house in the auction would be a power move. <laughs> what if you auctioned your house and got your hockey? <laughs> that would be pretty good. Uh, that's funny as shit. We just uh, <laughs> we just took pictures of everything the other day. Oh, good. Scott Van's new. Scott, welcome. Where are you from? Nice. Well, I, I want to know where he's from. You like how I call Bassard Mike out? Vince Dart says he's kind of. Bassard Mike says I'm new. We've seen Bassard Mike, though. He I can't know. be new. Maybe it's just such a good name where it feels not S new. Somehow, in the next, this winter, my goal is to be able to have you guys, the viewers, call in. Mm. And we, we want to talk to some of you. Like, literally get you on the phone and just... You know, let's pick a couple at night. If like somebody at calls the, in on your cell phone and you put them on speaker, could everybody hear it? It'll yeah, be really it, crappy. It's not as I got if you. I do this, I want to do it right. You know what I mean? Scott Vance from Jersey. BP says he's new. BP, where are you from? Nice. Hunting Bass says this is my first radio. L O L not <laughs> Bass or Mike. Hey, uh, Brian was yeah, says he's so calling fun. in. I'd love it to would get everybody. Be a blast, uh, man. Yeah. Ohio. The BP's phone lines from Ohio. are not open right now. We got Ohio. We Actually, got you know what? Why do you anyone, do one? If if somebody wants to call my cell phone right now, we'll get you on. Not 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 yet. Not yet. I'll tell you when. <laughs> I'll tell Jim, you when. Jim Tiefenthal says do you take collect calls from prison. Well. <laughs> Oh, uh, here's what we're doing. I, I got to talk about the uh, the giveaway here, the super chats, because yeah, they already had a couple of people uh, go in here. So let me uh, right. let me try they to pull a, that up real quick. They got a good chance to win. We're gonna do something kind of cool tonight. Okay, what do you got? Um, Tim, man, order it up, bro. There it is. There we go. Okay, boom. Let's go. The giveaway. Of course, we're gonna give away this monster bass hat that doesn't fit me. Brand new. Still got the label. Gotta like it. We got the monster bass and Mountain Dew t-shirt what size monster, monster bath it's a double x but it'll shrink double don't worry okay double x all right and then i'm giving away the the box right here yep and i threw some goodies in here for you guys of course you get to learn all about the fall winter transition with epic eric in there that's right bake, bake i'm just gonna reception. hold up some of the cool crankbaits very okay. cool color there no, this is not an auction, Ken. This is just a giveaway for Super Chat. Well, um, Nico stuff. We got the uh, X Zone Center Stick. Oh, nice. We got the Fat Baby Finesse. Okay. I threw in a Beast Coast Sniper Jig. Ooh, look at that color. I'll catch him on the upper bay. Uh -huh. Or Bro uh -huh. Tomac. Check that bad boy out. What is that? Who makes that 13 fishing? 13 fishing. Okay. Got some mustad hooks. Drop shot some... hooks or what? Uh, Nico. Nico. Got a couple of these smallmouth crush stickers. Whoa. Speaking of Nico, I'm putting a Nico worm in there. 
The Zaza. Dang. Throwing it in. Oh, shoot. Another. Beast Coast Open Water Sniper Jake. Smallmouth Crush approved. Look at that. Throw that in there. Oh, but wait, there's more. Of course, you get another <laughs> sticker. Throw down your minivan. The Bamboo Bomber. Nice. The base. We haven't seen them in a while. No. I'm going to throw them in. Last but not least, the number one drop shot bait for 2022 for me. There it is. The Great Lakes Drop Minnow Boom. in Spicy Melon. Good color. Smallmouth Crush approved as well. You can't go wrong with that. Uh, that's a pretty good little giveaway here, bud. All you got to do is super chat us up for your chance to win. Nice. Right. Brian goes, what are we going to talk go? about? So I try to get JP on tonight, actually. What'd he say? He never got back to me. <laughs> he didn't? Mm -mm. I talked to him no. a couple times, man. Yeah, he's been busy. I wrote him a poem. Uh, okay. You want me to read it? Not sure. <laughs> it's nothing. It's nothing weird. Go ahead. So, well, so Jay, a grown man that writes another grown man a poem. Not two really grown a poem. men that like to fish. It's not that really write a poem. each other poems. It's not a poem, and he didn't write me a poem. It's the thought that counts. The guy was having a rough week, so I said. Uh, I said, J to the P, a man as tall as a tree with a will that's stronger than an oak. He's there when you need him and even when you don't. He's a Bassin brother that loves you more than his own mother. Like a 500 foot deep creek. I could go on, but suffice to say, it's you that makes me thankful today. Big love to you, my brother. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh. E -E. <laughs> I mean, the guy said it hit him deep, and he needed it more than I knew. And it, and it hit him at a time where he couldn't thank me enough, man. He read it to his wife, man. He said he welled up when he read it, bro. I mean, I that's I got to show people love, man. And it just hit me. I, I kind of knew maybe the universe was talking to me like, JP maybe needs this right now. So that's what I did, bro. What do you think of that? Don't worry, I won't write you one. You're not much on the uh, feelings category. <laughs> I saw you squirming when I was, you know, showing you how grateful I was to you th this evening. Right. Right. right, right. Um, you know what I mean? I need no recognition. <laughs> I need no. Uh, yeah, nothing. I know. I know your jam. I, I know I'm your good. jam. But but remember, you're not like the rest of the world. I understand that. I'm not and, part and of the we, collective. We've been there before. Oh, so Listen. collective means the collective people need to uh, be appreciated and loved. Don't what? go there. Not tonight. But, oh, that, Listen. That, that on the back end of like showing people that you appreciate them. So people that show people appreciation are part of the collective. We should just this be robots. Dr. and Phil, but this isn't we Dr. should just Phil be too. we should just be robots and not show any emotions or appreciation no, towards our that. friends and fans. Well, what did you just say? You said collective. <laughs> well, as I'm talking about showing love to JP, what the fuck, dude? What? Listen, that was a beautiful poem, and if you wrote me something like that, I'd be very grateful. Absolutely, I, I got you, man. And sometimes when somebody says, uh, when they show you that they're grateful, you don't need to make a statement. I don't need any of that. What you, what you say is thank you. Mm. Thank you. Speaking of that, can I just, I got to get something off my chest. Do it. And, and I know it shouldn't, it should not bother me. It shouldn't. And I shouldn't even be bringing it up because I should not allow that thought to enter my mind because I right. know better. But right. just right before the show, I was scrolling through Instagram. All right. These people that are like, I, I don't know. Some guy wrote, I'm not naming names. Okay. But he's like, you know what it takes to win? And then he, he lists like reasons why you don't win because you quit. All right. You don't put in the work, blah, blah, blah. And his Instagram's all him just happy in his suit and doing business right. meetings and people behind him cheering him on. Like that person I feel is 
looking for something, looking for that meaningless like or that, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, it just rubbed me the wrong way, man. If I'm super successful, I'm not like, maybe he's a coach. I, you know what I mean? I don't know. I, like I said, right. it shouldn't bother me. I'm sorry to even bring it up. Uh, Do you feel you know me, what? though? Kind of? Not really, because I don't okay. let things like that bug me. I, I try I, not I, to. Be, right. And I, I get where you're coming from. But, I mean, we all read things that bug us. So I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it. You know, some people are just trying to throw out their view and connect and tell people what they're about. And, you know, I mean, social media is a form of expression. Sure. It's a form of recognition. People are on it for all sorts of different reasons. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. Right. Some of mm -hmm. us are there for validation. Um, some of us are there to learn. Some of us are there just to creep. Some of us are there just to complain, <laughs> condemn and criticize. Right. right. I mean, right, right, yeah. right, right, right. Because people read things and they want to condemn, criticize Learning. or Lately complain. Lately for me. It's been a which tool, is, dude. Which is, which is great, right? Because without it, I mean, holy crap. I mean, how much have we all learned? Or I was just you know, thinking the other day wisdom? how, and I'm sorry, guys, we're going to try to get into some sort of topic tonight, but yeah, well, let's just talk. I mean, it's, it's crazy the fact that now I can buy something that I don't know how to put it together, and I can go on YouTube and type it in, and some guy has put an unbelievable video step-by-step step on how to put that product together or you know what I mean like it's crazy or like like me I'm I want to learn about catching deep perch on a in a, a 30 foot basin in February what baits right to use you know I didn't know I didn't know nothing about these insects that live under the ice and emergent red worms and all, all this stuff you know what I mean it's like fascinating <laughs> so right <laughs> KCT Fisher says let's get back to the broetry Oh, that's a great term, man. That's right. It was a bro -um. It we, was we a bro lot, we, <laughs> we got a lot of su super chats coming in, guys. So I'm, uh, we're keeping track of everyone. So tonight, what I wanted to do was really show our appreciation to the uh, subscribers, the viewers here tonight. And maybe we each take a question, anything yeah. that you want to ask Eric or myself fishing related or not and if we feel like we can share or or answer those questions and maybe lead us down another topic i'm sure. in let's do that for a little bit since we're uh, let's do it open we're, chat. Sh we're short on short on guests this week it's open topic man open topic open questions topic. we're going to turn it over to the viewers there you go and right. at this time Shoot. if you All do right. have my cell phone number and you feel like calling <laughs> uh you have a about by the time the clock hits 8.35, the phone is going back on silent. So if you're going to do it, you do it now. Okay. So what time is it? It's it's, it's 8.34. 834. You got one minute. You're giving people a minute to call you. Because that way they're not like thinking about it. They're either going to call it or not. And hopefully okay. I don't have them in my phone. So I, don't, I won't even know who they are. But I'm going to answer um, the first call that comes in. Yeah. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who could it be? So this one is from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. All right. Welcome to the Smallmouth Crush Live Show. Who are we speaking with? Yo, Travis. How you doing? I'm doing hey. good. <laughs> Who's this? It's Wade's turn tonight. There he is. What's up, man? Waves, current, and ice. Can you hear him, Eric? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, he's coming in fine. You can hear his voice? I can. I can. Yeah, I can hear you. That's awesome. I'm going to put the headphones down because I'm getting eyes open. Yeah. So, so, so what's going on, man? Man, I'm trying to find time to go fishing. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, just like way too busy. Kids working every night. It's nuts. But uh, it's cool to hear you. You're getting into that. Okay, so the Lund is actually going to be used, uh, not really. I, I'm definitely going to mess around with some walleye, but it's really uh, is going to be is going to be used in a specific uh, tributary for salmon and steelhead, where I don't need a drip boat. That Lund would do perfect. And then I also, of course, want to do a little bit of waterfall hunting on the Big Lake. And then since I have a, since I'm going to have that size of a boat, a 20 footer with a 150 tiller 
I figured why not put two downriggers and start learning a little bit more about salmon and trout, you know, during the warm weather months on the big lake. Yeah, that's the plan. So you can actually fish the mouth of the Oswego. Yeah, absolutely. There's going to be so many opportunities. So it's kind of a well-rounded boat. That's why I'm leaning towards that. But uh, for those that don't know, uh, Waves Current and Ice, I mean, you've been watching us for ever and we actually fished together as a co uh you were a co-angler on Cayuga and uh and we, we've shared that story a few times uh that was a tough tough yeah, event cool. I think you cash a check yeah, like, unbelievable yeah I did I, I um thanks again man you put me on a couple of fish I got a check out of that that was unbelievable right that was tough and I went back again this year with um uh, with the DFLs, and it was the same deal. It was just like I had so much trouble, and yet a bunch of other people got fish this time. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever they they they, they burn in the grass, it like phew, turns off. It's ridiculous. But, uh, oh wow! Yeah, no, we had a good time. I was able to never sneak across the border despite COVID. <laughs> I know. Yes. You use that exemption, so now you can get across yeah, the border yeah, easy. Every everything's e everything's yeah, back. Money, so that makes you a professional fisherman. Yeah. Right. So like, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, everyone else is doing it at the time. So what's your plans for this season? Are we, are we going to see you up here in this zone? Are you going to be doing some, uh, what are they now? Not BFLs, MLF, I guess. I don't even know what they're called anymore. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to shoot for any championships this year. It's like I, I went to the, the regional on the James. I mean, oh, it was wow. a bomb. It, was, it, was, it totally sucked. I, mean, I, I, got, I got a couple of voters, really nice guys and stuff. But we just weren't on them, you know. And sure. when you drop a brand and you go to a regional, you don't even get to play fish. In, in oh, I'm this time. I'm going to start cherry picking hurts. this year. I'm going to go to more local tournaments. And I want to put my, set of, my money aside because I want to get a focus on. Got That's it. That's kind of what I got planned. Well, I just so have. That, Travis, I mean, are you more, when you do tournaments, are you more looking forward to the championship or are you looking forward more to, like, the local tournament where you know that you can bust on it? What's your point of view on that? Uh, I love it all. So when I fish the. When I do commit to the whole series, I commit to try to win Angler of the Year and, uh, you know, make it to the championship. Like, everything, man. I But I put so much into it. And looking back, like, I looked at some of the schedules for this year. You know, Eric, they're coming down to the Potomac. Uh, I think wow. a bunch of them. So Chesapeake. Like, do I want to commit to all that? Uh, even the, the Open, there's – not the Bassmaster one, but the uh, the MLF one that's on Lake Champlain towards the end of June. Mm. You know, that's gonna there's gonna be some 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 good fish still to be caught on beds, which is one of my favorite ways to fish a tournament. And yeah. I just know if I sign up for that, I'm gonna give away a week of just that's not something you can just show up a couple days before if you're fishing the sight fishing bed tournament. You know, that's sun up to sundown. Uh, staring in the water, uh, looking for, you know, that winning bag. That's a lot of work, man. And I'm just, I'm not sure if I'm ready to commit to that any, for a while. Because you're not looking for zones. You're looking for those four pounders and like, yeah. you're picking them up one at a time off the beds, weighing them and say, okay, there's a three pounder. Oh, there's a four. Okay. Yep. Marking that one down. That's the one you want to be there on turn of the day. Yeah. I hear you. Probably. Well, it's so much work, but no, that's cool. I yeah, mean, It'll be nice. I'll be up in your zone. We'll be a little closer. We'll have, we'll have to get together and fish again once I live up there and, and have more time. I do want to book a trip with you. So, like, how is it looking for next uh, next season? You got a lot of space open? Yeah, real good. Since I have a lot of dates. And, yeah, I, I would say within the next week, that was one thing I was trying to do this week. I'm going to get my uh, little advertising, a little bit of uh, schedule out to people so they can start booking with me. But I'm open if anyone wants to contact me email or give me a call um i'll give you guys some dates and we'll go from there oh that's cool yeah because i'll tell you a little secret don't tell anybody i suck on the st lawrence man <laughs> i have trouble catching them. i don't know what it is i might just never with the right guys and the right spotters it's just me that sucks at it i can't catch myself huh interesting i want to i'm gonna need a, a hand there yeah yeah absolutely that works for me that's not me right Heck yeah. So. Well, very good. Well, man, this was cool. We, we want to do this more often. I'm, I'm glad you guys are. I did. I took the first call, 
right? That Eric? was cool, man, dude. Yeah, <laughs> within a minute, waves, currents, and ice. I mean, Hopefully you see that everybody... name all the time. Well, heck yeah! All Listen, right, man. Well, let's I, keep in touch. Honestly, that worked perfect. All right, we'll see you. I it worked yeah. perfect. Take care. He could. I don't know if he could hear me, buddy. I mean, I think. He, but it was. Yeah. I, that was. But I, no, you had your headset on. Anyway, it's yeah. really cool that uh, that that he he came through fine. Yeah. I, that was that was fun. You know how? So sometimes I call in on the Monster Bass Live, and they have yeah, yeah. phone number. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and it connects actually, into yeah. the system and mm -hmm. ding ding and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, maybe Streamyard has that capability. There Here comes another call. Or are you oh, gonna geez. text? Who is okay. that? Oh, Jamie. Jamie Samatis. Ah, he's always funny, man. This guy's funny. I don't know. <laughs> when are we going to Wisconsin? Dead Poets Society. <laughs> I love it, man. Honored. Honored that I'm in a parody from <laughs> Jamie. You the man, uh, Jamie. You all right. So we got a lot of we got a lot of questions here. Uh, I, I, I know there's a really good through. one. Um, I'm just taking some that I can see right now. Do it. We're we're going fast. Ken, uh, when is Travis and E come to Wisconsin? Are we going to be able to meet up fishing? I hope so, Ken. It's just it's going to be Are hard to make it happen oh. this season, this next season. It's going to be hard. You mean 2023, sure. Yeah. A lot of people are asking, too, am I going to be at the sports shows? Right now, I haven't committed anything because my parents are coming up the first week in February to help me remodel. And that's going to go well into March. So I, I, I'm not saying I'm not going to do one or two, but it's not likely right now. Um. Travis, if you could only afford two graphs, what would they be? I can't justify more than with an 18 foot tiller I have. Well, that's a great question. Um, so on my Lund, I don't want to graph it all out too crazy either. So I, I decided to go with a Garmin, the Echo Map 126, but I think you can get by with a 10 inch screen as well at the tiller or at the console. And I'm putting one with a live scope, of course, at the bow. And that's it. Uh, and that's what I would recommend with any boat, to be honest with you. Now, if you had the option, a 360 really is beneficial. But if you only had two to choose from, I would go with a Garmin at this point. Got it. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Kuda asked the question, what business opportunities will you be seeking in 2023 that you haven't talked about on the show. Man, that I haven't talked about. Yeah. I, I Of course, there's always sponsorship opportunities. However. You've talked about that. Sorry. Not really. It's something else. I, I, honestly, I, <laughs> I'll i be honest. I think I mentioned this on a live. I looked into uh, doing some trading. Right? I think I said that. Uh, trading. It, what do you mean? Like learning how to trade <laughs> options. Oh, you did. So I did. that doesn't qualify, but that's all right. Keep going. I couldn't make it through it. Like oh, th I remember you saying that. I wanted to. I want to do something else. Just you should dive time. right into crypto options right away. <laughs> Are you surprised what's going on in the crypto market, man? I haven't looked, bud. I wouldn't. It's a very scary area right now. How bad anyway. is it? I don't even know. I don't even what? understand it. What's Bitcoin trading right now? I don't even know. I'll look. Options trading is good to learn. It funds his bass addiction. Brian, so there you go. You can reach out to a viewer. He can kind of guide you. Omerita right. has the best advice yet. Buy low, sell high. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Day trading. Uh, uh, Brian Wisniewski wants to talk about some Binsky technique setups. Okay. What's the market cap? Eight, $819 billion. Uh, Bitcoin. Oh, it's still strong. Come on, Eric. No, Those are good numbers. About... I just glanced at it right now. It's not that bad. There's some issues on the uh, some of the exchanges. Um, sure. FTX been bankrupt, yep. and yep. it could cause 16K, Brian says. Where'd you get I 18? Did you? Oh, I thought you said 18. Maybe uh, your no, brain 18, told 18 you to think. market cap. 
819 oh, billion. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Good. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Tom says go with FTX. They are the tops right now in crypto. I'd get in yes, if you could. Yes, yes, yes. On their coins too. How about you, Eric? Anything? For I mean, let's let, well listen. I mean, I, I don't know. I uh, I think you you've shared this in the past. Like you yeah. you're getting at the age where you can kind of maybe not work corporate as hard. Is that something you're thinking about or not? Man, really? I'm. I was never as busy in 2023 just from a, you know, an account perspective and business perspective. We made some new hires this year and, you know, we're going to be doing some things to, to, to grow the business in 2023. So I really don't talk about my business on the show. Uh, so, you know, that might be new, um, but I, you know, it wouldn't feel, it feel weird talking about my business on the show, but anyway, right. yeah. So uh, putting some investment into some, some of the business ventures that I have outside of fishing, um, to try to grow some sectors that, you know, are not strong for us today, but I have some talent within the organization. So as an extension of what I do from a IT consulting or staffing perspective, uh, build off offshoot branches. And, um, that's exciting for me. So yeah. you're not retiring, you're working harder. <laughs> I'm still having fun, you yeah. know, and like in the winter, what else is there to do? Right. So might as right. well pour it back into the business. Right. Cause you know, Legendary Lakes is on the back burner, but I do want to do that. I, I want to do a couple and I've already talked about it. So sorry, Kuda. Um, but if anybody wants to hear, even though I've talked about it before, um, I'll be going back down to Florida in the spring in February uh, for at least three weeks. And I'd like to make a, a trip to Texas. So um, maybe with TK Stanley at Tacklecraft, if he can get the time off, I think he'd be fun to travel with, man. I really enjoyed visiting him in Mobile around the Delta. We went fishing together and, you know, I love his bait, uh, bait craziness and his painting skills and abilities. So that would be really cool. And I dream a lot. I dream a lot, but nothing that I'm ready to talk about yet, Kuda, but maybe in future shows, but I'm dreaming all the time. Yes, that's yeah. a fact. That's what fuels me, man. That's what keeps me going is thinking about this business and fishing and, you know, the business of business that I'm in. Um, if I'm not creating, I'm not happy. So I got some ideas, but not ready for prime time yet. Kuda. Mm. Yeah. So maybe a couple legs of the legendary lakes. Maybe I could convince Travis to do a Wisconsin trip because I would love to visit some of those legendary waters. Uh, Travis, I mean, we've had people offer us money before, so it doesn't have to be a national thing, but maybe smaller. I still think I could get multiple sponsors smaller, mm -hmm. but not to the level of a commitment that Monster Bass spoke about to sure. make it easier on you, but use the money that we would gather from the sponsors uh, to pay for your time, because I know you need to be paid. This is your livelihood. Um, so I wouldn't be taking any of the money. It would just cover your expenses. And, you know, I'd be happy to pony up as I always do for incidentals, if you will, because it's worthwhile to me. I don't know those waters. I enjoy traveling with you. I love fishing with you. And uh, I think it'd be cool. So if you want to do it and we can find a way to get you paid, that'd be awesome, man. Now would not right now would be the time this week. <laughs> I'm just saying my favorite time of the year is late November in that part uh, of the my, country. Mine too, bro. Mine too. Yeah. I mean, you know where we normally are at this mm -hmm. time of the year. But I know. Well, Next I know. year. I hope so. So we'll just be relegated to blade bait fishing locally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'll do something crazy in January if there's no ice storm in Texas. Although they caught them after the ice storm. Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. Travis Wise, he's looking to buy an Airbnb property up there. Sackett's Harbor or Cape Vincent. Keep your eye nice. on Travis. There you go. Yeah. A lot of opportunity up there. Uh, one thing I love about that part of the country, for those that haven't been up there to the Thousand Islands, the St. Lawrence River, it's uh, it has its pros and cons. Yeah. And it, it, I would call it a con, but what, what I want to just be prepared. The place literally is stuck in the 80s, 70s and 80s. Like there yeah. is, it's not what people are accustomed to when they go and travel to another part of the country for the most part, like your hotels, right. uh, the rooms 
haven't been remodeled, which isn't a bad thing. I think it's cool. I think it's awesome to be able to walk downtown. Uh, you're not going to see a whole lot of chain stores and uh, gas stations and stuff like that. You know, the grocery store still like, like it's crazy. You know, you walk in there, it's like it's got the old wooden floors and, you know, it, they're not open 24 seven, you know, by seven o'clock they're closed down. Like it's a different lifestyle up there, uh, which I love, but at the same time, modern convenience is lacking, you know, try to find a good cup of coffee at a gas station up there is hard. Um, or even just, just normal things that you would take for granted in other places. Sometimes that area, you know, after 10 o'clock, you can't get a bite to eat anywhere. Right. Or on Mondays and Tuesday nights, everything's closed. So it's, it's, it's interesting. It's just a different, different feel. But what I was saying is there isn't, there's a plenty of opportunities. A lot of anglers are up there, uh, traveling, fishing, taking advantage of that, that area and the great fishing. And there's not a lot of great setups for them to stay. Uh, if you right. can, if you can get an Airbnb that that's set up perfect for a, uh, an angler where they can back their boat up, not have to unhook, plug it in. Uh, someone needs to throw in a really nice car wash gas station, uh, set up with a, with a hotel man and a, and a kick-ass, uh, tackle store. Oh my God. That'd be awesome. It, it definitely needs that, especially in that Sackets to Clayton, Cape Vincent area, but really? it'll never happen. It costs too much money. Yeah, dude. Uh, or a storage you. unit facility, man. Someone should put up a really nice storage facility for people with boats. Ooh. I think there's some potential there. Anyways, Krispy Kremes. I don't know about that. No, I agree. I agree. I love it. I love the fact that it's kind of back in time. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying a lot of people are thrown for a loop about that. Right. I hear you, bro. I hear you. No more storage units. Listen, no more storage units that are only 10 feet, uh, 8 feet wide by 20 feet deep. <laughs> M. Jones says... Can't back a photo. A bait shop and adult bookstore in the back. I think that's what you're saying. <laughs> There's a lot you could do up there. It probably makes some money. <laughs> oh my gosh! Mm -hmm. Hey, could you put up the Bass Lab website and the uh, the save fifteen code for orders um, over seventy five? I can only do what I can do here, bud. Let me look. <laughs> okay, no problem, man. I could put this up, and then you might what? have to just type okay. in the comments. And okay, can, here's the comment. We're doing a cyber sale at the Bass Lab. Can you put Orders that in? Over, um, yeah, I'm I'm putting right. I'm asking my son to put it on the top of the web page. Uh -oh. Cyber sale at the Bass Lab. Orders. I'll be right over, back, Eric. Can can you excuse over. me for one second? Sure, sure, sure. Did we did we miss any questions? I know we missed a bunch. Um and you and the uh the code to save is save. Go to save. I'm having trouble typing because I drank a strong boat is save 15 in all caps. OK, there we go. Hella Bass in the house. What up, Hella? What's new? It was a Binsky. Oh, yeah. Gold Binsky. Sean. OK, I got you, brother. <laughs> it wasn't from the Coldwater Killers. That was from probably the Blade Bait, the Blade Master one. Faith First Fishing. Are you new tonight? Howdy. So, Sean, hit me up. DM me, bro. I'll find a way to get you one, my man. Anyway, let's let's see some more questions. I know there were more. Let's talk about blade bait fishing because one of the guys asked techniques for blade baits right now. Um, personally, the way I fish a blade uh, in my rivers, I'm fishing a lot of dock systems, maybe some drops because the fish are still in like three to five foot of water, if you can believe that. They're certainly on the drops, so I don't have to make long casts. I prefer a spinning rod. And uh, I'm using a little Shimano rod that was built with spiral um, wraps, and it was built as a deck rod, believe it or not, for salt water. It is like a medium, but it's got a lot of strength in the butt, but a very soft tip. And I cut the butt down because it had super long butt. So I cut like six inches off it so it fits right here 
personally, that's where I want mine. And I'm throwing braid to fluoro. I probably throw 15 pound braid to maybe eight to 12 pound floor, depending upon the water quality. Uh, but typically I'll stick somewhere in that 10 to 12 pound range on the leader. And uh, I like, a, you know, anything from a quarter ounce to a three eighths ounce. A half is a little too heavy for me um, where I fish. And uh, if you got my cold water killers box, I included a Demiki vault. And why I put the vault in there is because it's a three eighths ounce. It's a unique size. So they make a quarter ounce blade and most companies go from a quarter to a half. There's nothing in between. And so that three eighths was the right size for a little bit quicker sink because I want it on the bottom. Right. And um, it got down to the fish. And I love I love the finishes, but I also love a Binsky and, uh, you know, gold most days, cloudy, silver if it's sunny. Uh, but the Demiki vaults got some really tight, tight colors. And, um, you know, because I like a little insert stuff. I like a little flashy business. Uh, I used to play with, you know, and, and work on the Binskis and add some nail polish. Here's a tip for you guys. If you're fishing just a plain gold or silver, whether you love a silver buddy, which is the OG, and that's still a fantastic bait, or you're fishing a Binsky, or you're fishing a Vibe, or you're fishing one that you guys are your do-it guys and you make it yourself, do yourself a favor. Take a little red nail polish and paint the lead portion only with the red nail polish. A little bit of a tip, especially for you shallow water Binsky guys. So there's a little VIP tip on a non-VIP stream. So, Travis, we're talking about blade bait fishing right now. Yeah. And I gave my little setup. I love a spinner rod these days. I find it's direct fall. I don't have to peel line off because that's a pain in the, the butt. If I'm fishing drops on my rivers, you know, I'm not making epically long casts. I'm generally mm -hmm. not scoping fish because I don't I don't fish with guys that have live scope on the rivers. I'm target fishing nine times out of ten. Dock pilings, maybe rip wrap. And sometimes if we're on a drop. I kind of know where the chunk rock is anyway on most of these places because I found it with a crankbait and uh, I know where to cast. I sure would. I think it would be helpful, obviously, so if you could see the fish. But a lot of times they are glued to the bottom and they don't always show up on your live scope. So you might think you could see them, but you don't. Uh, and it really fascinated me, Travis. I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but um, when I first put live scope on Scooter's boat, we were going down to Hartwell. Um, for the Bass Nation Team Championship. And we were dialing in the live scope on Russell for practice and breaking in Scooter's new boat. And um, I had, you know, I watched YouTube. I didn't even talk to you, but I just had a little step-by-step -step on how to dial in the settings for general use. And this guy was really, really good. And uh, mm -hmm. panoptic. So, you know, we dial it in, we calibrate it, and it's it's working perfect. And then as I go, Scooter, where do you want to go use this and, and test it? And there was this buoy. And I probably told this story on a stream another night. It said, uh, uh, um, fish habitat right here. <laughs> so we go, let's go over there. Literally, it was like 50 yards. We get over there. We shine it. Don't see any fish. Throw the drop shot. You can see the cover. Throw the drop shot. And literally, the screen came alive. They were all on the bottom. And they mm. were little dudes, you know, like. 12 to 15 inches but we caught spotted bass after spotted bass watching them swim over and i was using a shab shape shab shaped worm gary yamamoto and they ate that readily that's a great bait by the way it is um, it is it's amazing it's i amazing. bought a bunch to try this year and i never got around to it i still have really 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 good about it yeah it's really uh, really not really durable, good though, right like all. at all but man they eat the hell out of it and they hold on when they bite it they don't let go because all the salt, so it's, it's uh, a Eric. Very I'm gonna salty let you bait. take this question, yeah. um, and and I can perhaps add something. Uh, I do want to get to Money Bass. That's a new name. Have we seen Money Bass? Before? Yeah, Money Bass is new. I'll recommend it. I, I, okay. Can I talk about my four thousand? I've right. But I before, have, before I have there, new re, I have new religion, man. I want to share okay. this with you because okay. I, I want to use hear, a but, lot of spin reels. But I don't want to miss out on ZL Outdoors question. Oh yeah, what do you got? either and that's the one i wanted what? to hit first before it disappears. Which, which is, okay what is uh, it what's a what's a good late winter soft bait bluegill pattern yeah besides flat sides jigs and spinner baits when crop I'm patterns a, slow down in I'm southern largemouth areas particularly i'm gonna i'm gonna throw it on you man uh, it, it's okay. maybe a little self-serving but i think it fits the bill um it's a bigger profile it's not a jig it's a shaky jig worm 
It's a jig built on a shaky head frame and with a smaller profile. Or you could drop shot. I, and look, if you're talking about southern waters, I don't fish there in the winter. But if I were trying to imitate a bluegill, and this is no joke, Remember I would what literally. Ned well, well, hold mentioned. on. Listen, listen to what I'm going to say. Okay. I would take a beaver and turn it sideways and drop shot it just like that. I would power shot it. And you could go with the regular size beaver. You could go with the smallie beaver, but I am going to, you could nose hook it or you could Texas rig it. You follow me? But that to me, and I would dip the tail in chartreuse, but that's a great color right there. If that's like a Christmas tree color, it's got the red and green flake, green pumpkin can't go wrong, but I would power shot that power shot. And in the winter, and I don't know how cold it gets in Texas or down South, but in the winter, I'm shortening my leader, you know, to maybe four to six inches because a lot of the fish are on the bottom. It gets colder. It, they're, you know, they're less tight to cover. And I would, I would pitch that thing and dead, I mean, right in a freaking treetop on the bank. And I want to, I want to make this point because one of the biggest things that stood out with the, uh, with, when, when Ned was on the show, remember he said the gill plate on the bluegills and how, you have yeah. that blue color, and, how, yeah. and that's why he used a lot of times a blue jig head. He thought that that little blue mimicked a bluegill. I kind of I, I'm digging that. That's stuck in my head, and I'm actually going to attempt to do that a lot more, especially on the Chesapeake this coming season. Get and yourself then, a sharpie. Mm -hmm. Get yourself a that. sharpie. Yep. Get yourself a sharpie, and take a watermelon colored. You know, Tom Pavlov, you're right, man. The the, the Bellows Gill is awesome. This. I want to get the it's, Tom's comment too. It's yeah. so freaking expensive and it's not durable. And I couldn't put an EWG hook in it, meaning I, or 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 power shot style hook. It's tough. I don't love I don't love a ringworm style bait when I'm trying to rig it vertical. And so to me, I could I could take a beaver style bait in a watermelon. And, you know, based on what Trevor just said with the Ned, a watermelon, take a blue Sharpie in that like really like Carolina blue and put a little bluegill plate mark on the, on the head right there and then dip the tail either chartreuse or orange. And, man, you could doctor up a watermelon bait to really look like a bluegill. But power shotting, it's an ignored technique. And power shot to me is the same setup you throw a jig on. And you could throw heavy. You can go three-eighths ounce, plow it right through the cover. You're fishing a Texas style. It's not open hook. And you're putting a bait in a spot above the bottom. I mean, Tokyo rig is the same thing, in my opinion. I don't like all the hardware on it. And I'm not trying to punch grass at this point, you know, in the season. So I'm throwing to hardcover targets and um, it'll work for you, man. That's now what I back say. to the 4,000. The 4,000 spinning reel, guys. I, I, look, I, I was a 3,000 guy all the way. I think I started at 2,500. Then I stepped up to three. But recently, I've been using the 4000. It's the American-made version of the um, Shimano Exens. And I I've, I fished that throwing finesse swim baits. I used that in my championship with Scooter today. I caught key fish on a finesse swim bait. It was a spark shad with an Okashira screw head. And um, I use it for Ned rigging. I've used it for literally every technique, shaky heading. The line pickup makes me more efficient the line twist is so much less if you're throwing pure pure mono or pure um fluoro if you're one of those guys but even with braid over time because it's a much bigger loop i can if the fish is swimming at me i i can stay in contact i can catch that fish because per crank i don't know man i'm i'm reeling probably 37 38 inches of line it's like a burner reel. I mean, it's probably as fast as any bait caster on the market. So I'd never struggle if a fish is really hauling ass at me in warm water. I'm going to catch that fish. I'm going to catch up with that fish. And the drag, you know, it's super smooth. But anyway, I love a 4,000 reel. And those are super light. And, you know, I pair them with my my, my Loomis's. Uh, but, you know, I've paired them with lower end, um, you know, great graphite rods. There's a lot of great companies out there in that 125, 150 range. There's plenty of information out there on finding, but I like a 4,000 reel. Uh, in fact, I'm I'm probably changing all, all my reels to 4,000. I don't see any reason to fish a three anymore. Hmm. That's just me. 
So there you go. I can think of 42 reasons why I can't switch. Because uh, you got 42 <laughs> spinning reels. <laughs> I would like you to throw the CI4. I don't. I don't. That I, I have in a fourth out just to see, just to go, oh, God, this feels terrible. I'll probably love it. I like it. I'll probably love yeah. it. Hey, Sean, I use, I use, I like the, um, I do throw a half inch Binsky, um, but I'm really digging. I like their quarter too, by the way. Um, three quarters is too much for me because remember, for what I'm doing where I fish blade baits, I'm not in New York with Travis. I'm not trying to get down to 20 feet. I'm pitching it to three to five foot of water. So. Yeah, Brian, 4,000 gives you better, heavier drag. Um, you're right. Waves, currents, is tight. it needs a lot more line, but you can, you know, you can fill it. So, and I, yeah, Gordon, I really like the paddles on the 4,000. It's bigger. Oh, 4,000 Kent for, yeah. Hella bass, there you go. Just hey, add more I, backing. Can I just, I, I want to say something real quick. You guys might be seeing me messing around with, I got a new phone case, okay? And then does just it float? Today, does it, does it float? Just today, I saw somebody's Instagram post, and I just looked on their website. And after tonight, their uh, their uh, Black Friday special is gone. Has anyone Damn, used really? this? Because I'm thinking about buying one tonight. It's this the uh, leash. The leash. It's the Hawk XL phone tether. I don't know. I don't know which one to get. There's this. Ooh. There's this one that has a, a thing that goes inside the case, and then there's this one that wraps around the phone. But I think it's pretty cool. Oh, if you I use see it. how they do it. Yeah, you 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 put that on your belt. Yep. And it has a cord that stretches so you can check your you phone. Take your picture, look your whatever, and then it's always I'm thinking about like when I'm in my waiters, uh yeah. or just in the boat in general, man. I I I don't know. I'm looking. I just don't know which one to get here, and it's 25 percent off. Ooh, by midnight. Now that tonight. one looks that that one looks pretty good, Travis. Yeah, because I don't know if anyone's using it. Is, is that is that stick right there like a uh, metal where it holds the coily stuff that you pull out? What's that? So that, that would be the thing. This right here, or yeah. I'm sorry, this right here. The the green thing I see because I can't see. Is that? Uh, that's the just the coil? like the, the coil. Or is that like is that like a? Oh, it's just the coil. I thought it was the coil inside of like a tube. No. So there's this brand, there's this style, and then there's this thing that goes, somehow it goes into the case of the phone. That seems complicated. Oh, yeah. Andy B's got a good point. Guys, on that Exence 4000, 4, it has a very shallow spool, so it doesn't use more line. You're right, Andy B. I forgot about that. Dur. It's been a long time since I've spooled those up. So <laughs> goes around the case. Okay. Sean says his has a metal ring. Rogue fishing makes a phone tether too. This is Andy Leonard. I don't think you can go wrong with that. Yeah. He has a Ugo and it floats. Hmm. Yeah, the floaty cases are a little more bulky. Right. And then once it's on, you've always got a floaty case on. So maybe the tether thing is the way to go. Where do you keep your phone when you're fishing? Just in the side thing. Right. I got gotcha. you. So, so now I'm not you worried about. A... I'm not worried about. Maybe I don't need this. I don't know. Have you ever lost a phone in the I water? Have. I have. You really have? When? I lost one of them, uh, that Motorola r Razor back in <laughs> 2004. Did you really? On Lake Winnebago. I got it back. I, I used the net to get it. I, I lost an earbud on the Potomac in pretty heavy current. Uh -huh. I, I had it in my ear and I tried to take it out and it flipped off my hand and it bounced on my padded carpet it straight into the water and sunk like a rock. It was gone. Mm -hmm. I laughed my ass off. Right. Yep. BTC lost his phone for sure, man. So uh, Jig Squad has a Rogue Fishing Co. holder. It's similar to that one. There you go, man. Huh. Yep. I can't even put this damn case back on. Uh, well, that's a challenge. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it's good when you're using your Kyle. Like, try Gordon for sure, man. So, what did we miss? Any other good questions, man? Questions. We talked about blades. We talked about business opportunities. Um, Brian Waterman, I cut the butt off of my Shimano rod with a hacksaw, and I did it very slowly. So I put I put electrical tape around the graphite tight to, to mark where I wanted to saw it. And I lit, I didn't read anything about how do you do that. I just trusted that the hacksaw it was a fine hacksaw. So it was like a hacksaw that was like a mini hacksaw blade and it didn't have really thick teeth. And I really took my time and it didn't splinter, believe it or not. So, and um, yeah, I should, I should show that on a show one time, man. It's a badass little rod, man. It's great for pitching. It's not long. Because remember, I'm pitching, trying to get it under docks and next to poles. So I, don't, I didn't want a seven-foot foot deal. So what else did we miss? Let's see. The Binsky, we talked about that. Um, I'm just looking, guys. Oh, Colin Veith, if for the Bluegill guy that had the question on the Bluegill down south, Issa Gill Flat Jr. What about the new Gilly from Berkeley? Anybody tried that? That's got to be cheaper, and it looks super real. I don't know if you could get a um, a hook in it, like you'd. Ha- I don't. I you'd, you have to nose hook it. I don't know if you could get an EWG to get it. Like a, I don't know what the hooking percentage would be like. Um. Somebody said South Jersey said check out the Thunderhawk grenades. It's similar to a uh, bellow gill, but made out of a Laztec material. All right, there we go. Uh, someone else had a question about throwing a rigs on Lake Ontario. I certainly do. Heck yeah. They do work, yeah. Oh, look at that. KCT Fishing says, juice on fork. Power shot the flipper beaver. Boom. We're on the right track, guys. Good finesse underspin for a three-inch swim bait. Yeah, the uh, Great Lakes finesse one. That's a finesse underspin. Travis, would you Mm -hmm. agree? Yeah. They just released that, Great Lakes finesse. Check it out. Um, I'm just, I'm reading through, I'm going back guys. Sorry. Low budget fishing adventure. David Brown, draw shotgun is decent fire. Okay. Fish finders. Fucking hard is this? Trapper treble on a Binsky. Brad Petrie. There's a tip for you guys. A trapper treble on a Binsky's minimize lost fish. Holy hell. I never thought about that. Cause I didn't want to know if it works. Cause I don't know if you, then you're going to have to replace all the, the trapper. I don't mm-hmm. either. Uh, depth circuit vibes, all that. All right. I think I caught up, guys. Anyway, yeah, Colin Beef, love the vault, hate the hooks. All right. There we go. Doing this wrong. I make a co-angler hold my phone, Travis Wise said. <laughs> Thoughts on bait fuel? Well... I'll just say this about that. It was involved in my biggest smallmouth dirty 30 bag ever. <laughs> was it the deciding factor? I don't know. I think it was. <laughs> I know what you did last summer. Omerta. He's going up north, Omerta, right? Travis, you're going to what county in New York? Jefferson. Jefferson County, and that's how far from the Finger Lakes? Oh, less than an hour, hour and a half. Not bad. He's going to be close, Omerta. Does Lake Ontario have a 10-plus smallmouth, or is there too much fishing pressure? I nah, think so. It's there. It's there. Yeah. Okay, cool. You are supposed to hot side hook the ghillie with an EWG hook. Wave currents and ice. There you go. Somebody tell us if they power shot the ghillie if he gets success. It's a cheap bait. They'll probably hold on to it because it's, uh, you know, I believe in power bait. No yeah. question. Ken O2, I have never built rods. That was something that a buddy of mine did. Mason fishing rods. He got out of the biz. And uh, I've got a cranking rod. You used to be able to buy G. Loomis blanks back in the day. And I bought um, I bought several blanks. I bought some G. Loomis blanks. And I bought, um, uh, I can't remember the company. 
name some rod companies. Um, oh, what the hell's the name of? It? Anyway, I bought them off of eBay, and he and he um, wrapped them for me, and I still have them. I have uh, mermaid decals on a. Um, oh, I'll think of it. I'll think of the name. Anyway, because I wanted to remind me of my wife. And then I got a G Loomis crank and stick rod that is absolutely badass. That is on a, it's, a, it's built on a spinning rod, Tennessee handle. So loved it. Loved it. That anyway, there you go. Woo, what else? North Fork composite. No, nah, man. It, it's uh what the hell? I can see it in my mind, man. It's a really popular rod company. Hmm. They allow you to customize rods. They had a crank and stick. That was a, um, Oh man, I can't believe I can't think of the name. It's killing me, man. Mm. Did we talk about tailspins? No. Does anybody use tailspins? I got them, but I've never thrown them. Kissler. That's it, Michael Bradley. Kissler. Kissler, Kissler Z Bone. I bought some Z Bone blanks when I found the Z Bone blanks. I had uh, yeah. a couple of good days uh, fishing this one. So that's one that I got from Austin. I was going to yep. bring that down to Lake Hartwell. I, I think I threw it a little bit, but there was not that bite going on for us. It it looks amazing, but I I actually caught more on a uh, – that day it was probably the Binsky over there. So, so to me, that is not a bait that you lift you off the bottom. I know you, you can. can. But isn't that more of a steady, maybe a schooling fish kind of thing? Uh, or it, it can be. I, I feel like suspended, suspended. I think it can be fished school. a lot of different ways. But yes, that's definitely one way. But with the treble on the bottom, I would really. I mean, I don't know. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, you're right. You're right. You I mean, hell, they all got trebles on the bottom. Yeah, there's a, MJ. a lot of different ways you can fish that. Uh, tail spinners work great in the fall. Tom Pavlov, very good. I didn't know Brian Wisniewski that the Z Bone blanks are made by North Fork Composites. How about that? Damn, learning a lot, man. Tail spinner is awesome on Herring Lakes. That's why I bought them, Brian. We were down there at uh, Hartwell for the Bass Nation Championship, and um, I had them. Yes. Oh, used to be North Fork Composite. Kistler uses Torrey blanks now. Torrey. Where are they made, James McMullen? Oh. <sighs> John's in the house. John, what's up? All right, what else are we talking about, Travis? You got a phone I, leash going. You got a new I, phone case. I got the phone case in. I'm we good. talked about Binsky's, Rico, Rico or Japanese yellow. David Brown, just because the uh, the Rico is so much more available. I throw the Rico. But I do have some yellow magics. It's hard to tell the difference, man. You know, I probably got some I like yellow, the magics yellow I like the yellow up there. magics. Yeah, I've caught more fish on Yellow Magic than a Rico. Let's see if we can see the difference. I'm going to pick out a Yellow Magic. Here's a Yellow Magic. Now let's pick out a Tifa Michael. Who's ever heard of that? And then let's let me see if I can get this down without pulling like seven baits down. Oh, he did good. Okay, there's a big Yellow Magic, and then I'll get a big Rico. And let's see. And then you got the Don Iavino Splash It. Man, we're just having a little popper show here. Well, I got to get a, a little Rico. I know I got one. There it is. It's a lot of lot of poppers up here. And then my favorite popper, which nobody's mentioned yet. Nobody's mentioned. Okay, so here's a yellow magic. This is the big one. You guys know I'm a fan of the big one. This is uh, a small yellow magic and a small Rico. Let's see if we could see the differences. All right, there's your Rico. There's your Rico. Um, let's see if there's any difference. I'm going to hold these up. <laughs> and then we'll shake them. All right, that's the yellow magic on the bottom, the Rico on the top. I'm examining the shape of the baits. It looks like they could have been made in the same damn factory. All right, both have pretty sticky, sharp hooks. I changed the hook out on the, the Rico, but I'm going to shake it. Got to take my thing off. Okay, that's a pretty thin sounding Rico. I don't know, man. They sound. I literally think they came from the same factory. <laughs> Are they a different thickness? I can't tell. They're the same length. 
I swear I think they came out of the same factory. Uh, dudes, dudes, I cannot tell the difference on those baits at all. Look at the cups. If you could see a difference there, you got a better eye. Can I see those now, two colors now, again? Now, this is a Michael. Who's ever heard of a Michael? This is a Michael from Japan and Rainbow Trout. Now, this is a much deeper sounding rattle. Let me look at the cupped face. Mm, maybe this is a little rounder than Michael. Anyway, there you go. So now let's look at the Yellow Magic big one. And let me get out of Rico. Give me one second. I got to find my Rico box. There is my Rico box. Here's my Rico box. Okay, going to the Rico. Rico, suave. And here's the big Rico. Okay. Big Rico versus Big Yellow Magic. I'm going to shake them. Let me, I always like to listen to the sound. Multiple BBs, pretty loud. The Rico seems to have a deeper, deeper rattle. Travis, you got it. Yeah, this is a more high pitch. I so the Yellow Magic has a higher pitch than the Rio Rico. This is the, this is the Magnum Yellow Magic. I'm, I'm going to examine and show you guys the cup faces. Rico, I don't know what side it would be. It's the bone one that I'm showing you now. That's the yellow magic. You see any difference? I don't. Different sound. The line tie appears to be just a little higher. There's a difference. The line tie is a little higher on the Rico. What's it mean? That's a real Rico there, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Rio Rico, because they're I'm comparing both sides poppers, right? Then you got the splash it and the splash it too, which is Don Ivino. I don't know, guys. Does anybody know? Rico has a wider face. I concur. Than the splash it. So this would be more of a I'm sorry, than the yellow magic. That would have more of a splashing action. This could maybe more of a, but this really splashes like crazy too. So very minor differences. Deeper sound on the Rio Rico. Than the yellow magic for sure there you go let's see quality control in the yellow magic <laughs> i have a lot Same of questions time. uh to the to the viewers here and i'm typing them in as we go through if anyone can answer some of them <laughs> hey hello bass yellow magic for the win there you go plastic is key but is there different plastic in the yellow magic versus the rio rico can someone tell me that Because the old P70s were butyrate. I don't believe these are butyrate, but I don't know. But nobody's mentioned my favorite popper. Maybe they'll save that for a VIP stream, bro, because I have smashed their ass. And I've yeah. turned river rats on the Potomac Actually, Eric, that that's popper. a great idea. I want to do that maybe in June. Like, uh, Oh, yeah. Because Maybe's I have a couple water. that I would love to. Let's do that. I got some sneaky shit. Sneaky. Yeah, I would put that in. Uh, I would put that in the VIP category. Not everybody gets to get that. And there's some lucky craft sleeper poppers too, man. There's so much out there, dudes. If you like to experiment, you like to have something different than everybody else. That's your kind of stream. If you just want to keep it simple and keep it to your stuff. If you're like Hella Bass, and you just want to throw what you throw, and like my partner Scooter Lily, and you want to jam on a bento box because I saw him roast a bento box hard. And I, I laughed my ass off. It's funny. But, you know, some people are out there, to li they like to experiment, man. They believe in the uh, a bait difference. I know I do. Hmm. And I've got a million stories to tell why it matters. Because I have seen it. I've gotten my ass kicked, and I have kicked some ass on the same boat and from behind. Like, meaning, <laughs> it sounded weird. Nobody's <laughs> answering any of my questions I put in here. <laughs> oh, Rapal Skitter Pop. Boom. I asked if I, I don't well think the low beam is right faster. Ice drill. I want to know if I should use wire, copper, steel. Kyle Downey says a C, I don't think anybody cares about that. This is a really, <laughs> this is a bass fishing stream, honestly. Look at that. Chug and spit. Bangly Bango. I don't know, but Sean Lai, he likes experimenting. 
I would like to know. So, like you guys, you know that the old poppers, like the old, um, the old vintage uh, pop are, is butyrate. Butyrate, the old P seventy. That that lead ball is stuck. Let's try to get one that isn't stuck. You hear that? You hear that really dense sound? And just so you know. What's the difference? Butyrate is a softer plastic than the plastic they use today that is sonic welded. So the old rattle traps, the old rattle traps, I maintain catch them better than the new ones. Not like the new ones don't catch them, so don't get me wrong. But if you peel off the chrome, if you got an old rattle trap, maybe I'll go get one and show you guys. And you 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 kind of scrape off that chrome, you'll see bone material. And the resonance of the butyrate to me mirrors the flesh of a fish better than the clear plastic that is sonic welded today sonic welding is they take two halves of a bait they stick it together and they vibrate it like a hundred thousand times in a second and it melts the plastic and fuses it together that's how they can build bait so fast butyrate had to be glued together by hand so they made a build, build a straddle trap they would mold the two sides right in a machine and they would glue the, the halves together and it fused. That glue melted the plastic to it. And so that, that butyrate is denser. It's got a different sound. Some Norman crankbaits are still made with butyrate, but most of the industry has gone to the cheaper Chinese plastic. It feels different. I think it thumps different. And I think it sends out a different sound, more natural in the water to a fish. That's me. That's why a wood bait, I think, cannot perform plastic. That's just me. Mm. Acrylic is harder, more brittle. It's different. The ABS bone, butyrate. Yeah, you're right. They do an ABS bone. You're right, South Jersey. A lot of the, the, the Japanese versions will have a bone version in some of the JDM Lucky Craft crankbaits that you'll see. Bone material. They'll put a tungsten knocker in it. I've seen some like the uh, TN50, which is really cool. I, I don't know if they do the bone version, but they like do this Oyokin sound, which is sometimes they'll put a rock in it or something crazy. They'll do so all, all crazy stuff. Tom, he's got so many old rattle traps. Yeah, grab one of them old rattle traps, dude, and take a take your pen knife and just scrape a little bit of that chrome off and see what's underneath of it. It's very cool. The EPA would like to ban slumpy grumpy. <laughs> Uh, David, I meant to order a BFS Curado. I want to try that. Has anybody, uh, has anybody, uh, thrown it that's on the stream right now? I know a lot of you guys mentioned it for finesse cranking, but, um, did anybody, did anybody, you know what? These old series fives might be butyrate, like Speaking the original of old liplessness, dude. That's a bad, you know, huh? Are you going to auction that bag off? No. Oh, I thought those might have been old Excalibur. They are. Oh. Yeah, you're not selling those, man. Uh -uh. You better not. Those are like half ounces or, or any three quarters. I got them all. Yeah. It's good stuff, man. Very good. John, the old screw tail bombers are definitely butyrate. You know the difference because in an old bomber, um, and I'll probably have one up here. I don't want to have to bend down to get here. You go. So, the old bombers, I could get it off here. Good lord, come off. It's stuck to a flat side. That's just dirty and a repellent. So, the old bombers, you can tell most of you guys know this, but an old bomber has a screw tail, and that's the dead giveaway that that's a butyrate plug and it's got a lead ball way. Can you hear it? Can you hear that Travis? I hear it. It's a single lead ball in there. And that's a much deeper thumping. And that just feels so much when you hold like an older plug in your hand, it just has a different feel. I don't know how to describe it. And I have waxed their ass on plugs like that. Want a tournament on it actually on a Potomac and fire tiger. And the old paints in the 70s used to have different pigments in it, too. Under a black light, they glow way more than the new paint because they're not using the same crazy toxic compounds in fluorescence or they're cheapening out. 
and they put less in it. I don't know. They just glow differently. Like an old plug from the 70s or 80s will glow so much brighter than a newer one. So like Lucky Craft, the old, the new 1.5s, the paint is thinner. Uh, it's just crazy. So everything's getting cheaper. So anyway, let's hear. How many people said Curato BFS only problem is eight speed? So what do you mean eight speed, Sean? Sean, I, I want to know. Shallow spool swim jig fifty. Okay, so you got a light line. I, I need I need some peeps' opinions on something here. Hey Carl, are you a left hander or a right hander? Anybody a lefty? Guy, right, what do you Let got? What, what is it? Tell me. It's, what it's do you got? a different subject. So if you still want to roll with this. Well, no, no, no. I just. It's open topic tonight. Yeah, it's shift gears, bro. We did we did a lot. Uh, good night, eight five to one. That's like really fast. Master Mike's on, he's a, okay. I'm I'm a lefty, Carl. What do you got, Travis? Look at that All bass, right. walleye, perch, small <laughs> salmon, trout. What is that? I can't see it. You gotta make it bigger. Kids fishing, uh, ice fishing, waterfall. Oh, so that's I, the raft waterfall. for the back back of the trailer. That's what you'll see. Okay, right here. Yep, yep, yep. And yep. then the side of the trailer. It's obviously I just put this together, but I want the big logo. So picture the blue trailer. Half of it will be wrapped with the smallmouth crush. And then um, I like that Great Lakes. And then something about the YouTube channel. And then sponsors running along the bottom. These are all, but obviously there's not going to be white boxes, but does that look sharp? I think it looks good, man. I don't know how legible that type is. It's pretty good. You you What's like that feet. You like I that like, feeling? You, did you, okay, if you like it, man, big, it's all man. that that's matters. A, that's a, yeah, that's you're a, you're right. Eight foot tall door. Oh, that's huge. Um, so I mean, I really, you know, really, really. I mean, it's that's the wrap. Yeah. Don't you want something exciting like a fish or something? Something like a. Just Pretty something that brings people's eyes in. I mean, it's clean. You're right. It's just a trailer. Never mind. I, I was thinking truck. You could have something cool in the truck. You're not going to wrap your truck, are you? No. Just the trailer. Yeah. Man, it'd be nice to have some picture of something that you catch. I don't know. Like people catching fish. Like, I don't know if you could weave it in. I don't know. What's everybody's opinion? Does he need something plain vanilla like that? Or would it be like when you've seen a trailer, is there something more exciting based on uh, what he's doing? I'm, I'm just, just asking for... people's opinions. I mean, look, that gets the job done. It says what you do. But is that eye catching? That could be a car wash service for all I know. It doesn't, it doesn't show me what you do. That's what a graphic can be. It something that is eye popping and brings people's, you know, eyeballs to your trailer like that. That dude's about fishing and fouling, and the other f. <laughs> you get it? I said a joke. Fishing, fouling, and <laughs> what are people saying? I'm not going to get any good. What, what? What do you mean? Is this the way you? The way you? Uh, dude you always think it's the way i ask the question i'm just asking for honest feedback there's so many things you could put on a trailer there's a million designs it could be anything that's one thing and you just showed your audience everybody's gonna have an opinion on art we've been down this road before oh yeah it art is wholly personal uh, believe but there me is i still a, got there, yeah there is a science behind design mm -hmm. and you're trying to advertise. If you want to keep it low cost, go with that. If you want to do something different, maybe throw in a graphic or something that is eye catching. It's a great logo. I mean, it's the same logo you've always had. It's you've got a great brand. If you don't want it overstated, I get it. That's who you are. So just do it. But could the trailer bring more eyeballs? If it showed what you did, not to be too busy, but something. Is it even appropriate? I don't know. I don't know. I I'm not a designer, bro. You're good. All right. We're sold. Good. Thanks. 
Let's Done. move on. Thanks, everybody, for your feedback. We're going with this design. <laughs> uh-huh. What did everybody yeah. say? I wasn't even looking, man. <laughs> David Bear, he giving his genuine opinion and immediately backtracking on it to appease Travis. Hey, David, there's very few moments where I appease Travis. We go at it and we go at it hard. Um, we need to pick a winner because David Brown thinks we're going to be here till 2 a.m., which is not the case. No, we talked about it earlier, man. It was a uh, it was going to be a, a early, a early, early. I think uh, this was a good one. I think this I was think a good so. One. I think I think so, too. We covered. You know, we do me a we favor cover, since my uh, my number picker isn't working. Can you pick a number between one and twelve? Okay, I will pick. Um, I am a lucky number seven guy. I can't read my writing. Uh, <laughs> ZL Outdoors is the winner. Congratulations! Of the pack. And thank you for everybody who entered ZL yeah. Outdoors. I believe. And, and thank you all for everybody who ordered off the Bass Lab site tonight. I appreciate it. Um, thank you very much. That's awesome. That's awesome. Appreciate the support. No question about it, man. Hope you enjoyed. Send pics of your catches. I'll put you on the story. Hmm. ZL Outdoors. I thought you were going to say Z-Man Outdoors. What are they doing on the stream? That's crazy. Have you put your Z-Man order in yet? Not yet. Gotcha. Um, I, I, I uh, no, no, Carl, I have not. I I think I'm good. I I need a. Uh, I need the finesse TRD and yoga pants. Yep. Uh, green pumpkin goby. Okay. Believe it or not, I still have a ton of big TRDs to get me through the, uh, the oh. Chesapeake. I want to I want to discuss with you a couple of things, and I want to try it out based on the the origins of I the net. I know you talked to me about that stuff. Yes, and I agree. I'll be the, and I'll be I the guy who buys it. For... I'll be the guy who buys it, and no, I I'll, 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 I think it's a great idea. I, and, I, I know and, you're. And, I know where you're heading, right towards that football head and a few other things. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. But I want to. I want to te- and abate. I want to test mm. a Ned versus a Ned. And I want okay. to see which one could prevail. Maybe if we get on a group of fish. Ah, does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. I think it'd be a great video. Like, here's a school of fish. I am up next to you, so we both can see and cast. We got to make it fair. And I want to try to cast at the same time, same distance. Let the bait drop and see if one fish prefers it over another. Not like a, a group of a hundred where you know you're going to get bit. But maybe like a finicky group of fish. I want to have the same line. I want to do a light line test with you sometime. We both drop at the same time and see. Mm-hmm. I'd like to do a lot of different stuff this year, man. I think we could do some really crazy videos, good stuff, good content. Not just go out yes. and catch them, but like put mm-hmm. the theories to the test, man. Um, somebody said YouTube fish of his Cordelius. Colin Veith, Spiral Wrap Rod E. What's the deal? Yeah, so the the one I was telling about you for blade bait fishing, I'll have to post a picture of it. Um, it's a saltwater rod, man. It's made for saltwater deckhands. I, I, I've been on saltwater boats where dudes, the deck guys, or the captain, one captain I went out with, man, he mm-hmm. had got such a rise out of landing fish on this small-ass rod before everybody else. And um, it was built like that. They make really short deck rods. And this is a deck rod, believe it or not, that I use for blade bait fishing. It, it's also great for skipping under docks, by the way, because it's got some ass to it, but like this crazy tip that just allows the fish to eat the bait. Hey, Carl asked, have you guys switched over 100% tungsten jigs or still using lead in certain situations? The only time I use lead still would be with my uh, bullet weights. And if I am in fishing some really nasty man-made cover, uh, one, because obviously if you're losing a lot of baits, you're getting snagged a lot. It's a little less expensive, but I also feel like that lead will actually pop out a little bit easier. It at does. Times. That's really the only time. And I'm going to throw you one more thing. I'm doing it. Here's the concept behind old school Carolina rigging. 
A big one ounce lead sinker, which is an oval, rolls around on the bottom. Come, it will pop out because it's lead, not tungsten. When you when you cinch tungsten into a rock, it ain't moving. It's done. You're toasted. Mm -hmm. You can pop lead out because it's softer and it will pop free. Second thing is it's creating more of a disturbance. A little tiny tungsten head falling on the bottom doesn't make a puff. A bigger lead head coming through, you know, dirtier cover, sand, gravel, rock. It's disturbing more. And I think it's more natural because a crawfish is not small. Tungsten gives you better feel, though, Travis, right? Mm -hmm. Might slip through cover more, but the cost factor bothers me. Sure. And a lot of tungsten jigs don't have great hooks because of where they're made. I want a Gamakatsu or a Mustad. I'm just mm -hmm. like that because that's the most important thing. Or a BKK. Yeah. And, and, and my bullet weights, I, I literally, I don't think I have any lead over eighth because it's always the finesse type of deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, lead two pad, who cares, right? Tungsten, I, I want the lead to be longer and thinner down the shank so it falls not head first but vertically you know what i mean mm -hmm. stays upright more damn dude bravarni made I, I got an idea i'm gonna tell you later we need to make okay. this with a good hook it's a total idea for a way better tube head i'll talk to you offline mm. oh you, you're gonna like this concept trust me ah you're Ways wants me to rank the Great Lakes in order from best to least. And Ooh. I, first of all, I don't fish Superior much, right? Um, Huron's very limited. So I only have reference from Lake Michigan, Erie, and Ontario. And although they are similar, there's a lot of differences. And I, I get that asked a few times. And I really, I think Lake, I think, the community holes on Lake Michigan are, are now way overrated. But I think there's still really? opportunities to have some amazing days on Lake Michigan. I think Lake Ontario has the least amount of fishing pressure of all the all those three, especially away from the community holes of Thousand Islands, Clayton, Shimo Bay, stuff like that. Um I think Erie is a lot of fun and the fish are a little bit, and I'm talking, I shouldn't say this different times of the year, but I really, I would love another crack at, I would like to spend more time on the Eastern basin of Lake, uh, Lake Erie, out of the Buffalo. And at the same time, I'd like to mess around a little bit more midsection of Lake Erie, you know, that Sandusky, the Peely to Canada zone. But then, damn, St. Clair is fun, too. So, And in the mouth of Huron, I, they're all good. I I don't. Man. Travis, it's question. been a while. But what am I about to show? Uh, June bug colored square bill. There you go. Dude, that's it. That's the first cast smallmouth wonder. Up in New York. Mm -hmm. Caught one, and then we didn't catch another one. First cast. First cast. Travis goes, this spot's loaded. We didn't catch another one. Why? They were not there. Isn't that weird? I Neither do I, dude. But, I mean, it was I meant to be. It was yeah. meant to be. Thanks, thanks for taking me up there, too, by the way. Mm -hmm. That's just another thing to thank you for, man. Don't get all funny. You're I'm not going to go on and on, man. I'm trying. It's the season to be grateful, bro. It, every day is the season to be grateful. That's the first time I've heard you say that. But well, right, did you, you know, did you did you turn over a new leaf? No, gratitude is one of the most important. Uh, oh, what? what happened to you during Thanksgiving? You coming out a new Nothing. man? Well, what do you? Well, where did you get this new religion? I'm just saying that's part of the. Uh, the simulation that we live in, gratitude is a recipe. <laughs> what? <laughs> gratitude is a not... recipe to it. Okay, I didn't realize that, but and I mean, empathy, if it... yeah, uh, and empathy. We've mm -hmm. talked about both those things a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I could be a coach for the simulation and not even right. know it. That's how this whole thing works, bro. What you mean? You're, I'm, you're... I was. I could be like yeah. a super seeder, like, and I don't even know it. Do you think mm. I've been planted here for a reason? Do you think I've been planted in your life for a reason? Whoa! Yes, absolutely. We've That's been weird. we've been at this for many many lives before. Me and you. Oh yeah. Oh. Even though I wasn't on the Edmund Fitzgerald. Correct. Okay, just check it. <laughs> oh, T1D Steve. T1D Steve. There are green pumpkin crankbaits. There are. They're coming too, by the way. And just like that, he's gone. Taken away. Taken out of my life again, Eric. Please come back. These comments are funny tonight. Good show, even though we didn't really have a guest lined up. Uh, let me look at my calendar and see what we have ahead. I guess we'll let Eric back in. Dude, what did you hey, end? welcome back. No, what you was... ended yourself, bud. I, I did I must have pushed the button. Sorry, guys. That there you go for um T1D Steve. There's your green pumpkin, bro. You can't appreciate the the highlights. I'm trying to get some of the flake in it. But that little dude right there. Mm. Smashed him. Smashed him. I'm a fan, bro. Mm. I'm a fan. Yep. Yeah. You guys are the Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Uh, MJ, did EE write you a poem in your last lives? I perhaps I did. He might have. Lords reprogram me. I have Matthew. That's a pretty cool one too, man. I like that. Um, I like that mix of colors together. Ah, JP. Interesting you say that. There's a story about that bait that I will tell one day. A really JP Harrell. I will tell you a really interesting story about that bait one day, and you guys will be blown away. I will. I will expose this. This will be an expose. Okay. I don't know that I'll, I can't, I don't know that I'll expose everyone involved, but it's going to be an expose. Eric, how real about quick that? Before I forget, we, I, I need to have an auction. Oh, yes. But can I give everybody one more tip? This is a really good tip. I can't, Go we're going to have an auction. We're going to do it. I want to give everybody one more tip. One more tip. One more tip. What happened to Travis? <laughs> Where'd you go, man? I am. I okay. Here we go. This is my tip for you guys. I, I'd like to do it on a live stream. Maybe I'll wait, Travis. You got to come back now. I think maybe I should wait for a live stream. I'm gonna wait for a live stream. I changed my mind. Well, maybe not. <laughs> All right, I'll give you guys the tip now. All right, my Carter bills. Did you guys know? So if this is a bluegill bait, obviously I just showed it. But if I was trying to imitate a crawbait, right? So crawfish don't have eyes. So just pretend for a moment this is a crawfish. So crankbaits swim this way, right? And this is the tail of the crawfish. The eye should be here, right? And the micarta bill doesn't look anything like a crawfish to me because it's milky white generally not a fan of micarta because it doesn't hold up on rock and i crank a lot of rock but it gives it the bait a crispier action so for guys that maybe crank wood it does dig into wood sometimes if it's soft because it's so much sharper of a bill than lexan but anyway so there's pluses and minuses but you can paint this you can dye this you could dip that bill and some spike it you could make it hot orange so you would basically be painting the ass end of this milky white micarta bill and mirror it to a bluegill or, um, you know, there's a really famous crankbait that I like. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you guys this crankbait. And this is one of my favorite. And let's see if anybody can identify. This is an easy one, by the way. I've caught so many cold water bass, cold, muddy water on this bait. It's a discontinued bait. It's made by Rapala, but the bill is chartreuse. 
So that's a fire tiger. And if you fish a river with perch, fire tigers got to be right up there. Like Potomac, Upper Bay, fire tigers, like the num one of the number one colors. You can never go wrong with fire tiger. It says a little single rattle in it. It says a balsa bait. Who knows what this bait is? And it's got a colored lip. So what I'm telling you to do is right. It's a it's a repel, it's a rattling fat wrap. They made a fat wrap, but this is the rattling fat wrap, and this is my favorite. I like the rattling. There's something about the action of this which is lazy, but damn it catches those cold water bass. But anyway, I love the chartreuse lip. So you could take a micarta lip and make it chartreuse by dipping it and spike it, or get yourself a sharpie. There you go. Tip of the tip of the night. I'm giving up the tips tonight, bro. Pretty good tip. I thought so. Yeah. Oh, like deep like fat. Who the hell do you have any of those? You're damn right I do. You mean the down deep secret? Let I got a whole box one. of them right there. Let me see one. I think I probably got to go prove to the it. Bottom. Dude, you realize how deep it is in this fucking thing? With arm's reach, man, it should be the, right there. It, it is right there. The down deep, I got to look. I got to bend down. And find it because I know it's in this rope. <laughs> Holy hell. I'm reading. I'm going through balsa, flat mix, H2O jerk, wake bait, zoom, hickey, 2.1, top water, G custom. That sounds sexy. Zoom, E1, Z2, stumpy, killer two, zoom, tap duck, money. Ooh, what's that one? Brian's bees. Are you guys liking me just reading through all the boxes? I want to see that. Brian, do I have any OG shad wraps? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, I do. Like this one? With a little lead strip on the bottom? Tip of the day. And by the way, I'm sorry, I'm getting... This is just like my jam, Travis. you got to let me just spitball for a and minute. That's why I'm not interrupting. So I use lead golf tape. You can trim it because lead golf tape sticks way better than suspend strips. Suspend strips suck. But if you're really finicky... You could take some orange nail polish and you paint that orange or paint it to the match. Mm -hmm. You know, give it a little hot throat. Dude, forget about it, man. Forget about it. Because I'll, I'll I'll wait my flat sides, as you guys know. You've heard me talk about that. Who throws a suspending crankbait? Anybody out there? Who throws a sinking crankbait? This makes you think and wonder, is that it right there? Dude, this is about to like, this whole stack of stuff is going to fall. That ain't it. I got a whole box of them. I think they're on the bottom. I am not pulling that out. But I'll send you a picture of the box. Yeah, I got a bunch of them. Why? Did you like it? Um, no. I, I, okay. I didn't catch a lot of fish on it. I just, it's always fascinated it's, you because it's yes. supposed to like reach 24. And it had a weird lip, like one of the weirdest lips in the so game. So you say you can't get one right now? You don't have one? I got it. I'm not digging it out. I'm just not doing that. Can you do it for the show, Eric? <laughs> John, it, it tackle liquidator. How much you want to bet? I just doesn't mean I'm going to do it, but I'll send you a picture tonight when I dig it up. I'm not oh, digging in that. Well. It's probably oh on the God, second there it row. Is. That's the one, man. Finland, Brian, for sure, bro. <laughs> Baby thunder sticks. Yep. Ah, Scott James, glad to make you for oh, sure. Yeah, Matthew Weimer, Norman, if they still made some wrong button again. Well, let's give him a second. Anyways, what I was trying to say, dang it. You keep doing that, dude. You're doing it now. Oh, I, I'm not. I'm not. I know I'm you not. are. I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> it just means I'm I'm overstaying. I'm blowing up the stream, bro. Sorry. You are. Keep going. But you can make a bait suspend. You could use heavier hooks, step up one size. You can do the lead tape. Uh, you know, it takes a little more effort, but, man, it doesn't have to be perfect. But, boy, it makes a difference, man, especially when it's cold. Don't sleep on a suspending crankbait, guys. And earlier than you might think. In the spring, too. It's not just for fall or winter. It's a little tip for you guys. Hella bass probably got a few. Anyway, there you go. No, I haven't seen the Magnum ones. He <laughs> got DC'd. You're right, I did, man. Polycore size. 
We need to talk about that auction. I know, right? Yeah, JP. Yeah, they'll say Finland. Like you've got Finland and there's Ireland. They're all good. I think the Finnish ones and the Irish, or the Ireland ones were good. And then they went to where is the other place they went to, guys? Anybody who knows Shad Raps and Rapalos? What's the other one? What's the other country they made them in? What's the other country? Travis, I know you know that, but that's a Finnish one. That's Finland. I think that's what somebody was saying they saw it. Oh, I know. Uh, Come on. Not Croatia. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bangladesh? <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, guy told es, us we es, were at the shop. Es, Estonia. Estonia. That's it. Estonia. Did he say the Estonia ones were good or not so good? Uh, he said they were his least favorite, I believe. Okay, right on. That's right. Oh, the JP, JP, France. The auction is going to be great. Yeah. So when do you want to do it? Iran, <laughs> Iceland, Ukraine. Oh my God, you guys are going crazy. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. We still got a few people here. Hey, for those who have just joined, uh, Travis had a giveaway. You missed it, but there's still a cyber sale going on for a full week. At the Bass Lab, say 15, you order 75 bucks or more, and there's a discount. Got beanies, shirts, some lures are left, and I'm going to be putting stuff up this the rest of this week. So check back. I just haven't had time with Thanksgiving holiday. I meant to do it, but I just couldn't do it. <laughs> Money Badger, anybody? Sweden. Was that another... Uh, did they make Swedish uh, Rapalas? I don't know. But it says it on the packaging. Yep. And who knows? I will tell you this. Balsa, premium balsa is getting harder to find. You know why? The windmills. The blades are made out of balsa. If they're really there and not just a figment of our imagination. What's that? The, the windmills. windmills. Yeah. Yeah. Those so, big blades are made out of balsa. Yeah. So it's hard okay. hard to get balsa. And balsa, like, like um, not every balsa bait maker does this. Just a word to the wise for those of you who are real wood bait nuts. Um, really finicky builders. I have I know one, Marty Burns. If he doesn't like and it doesn't meet his specs, he will not use that block a balsa he won't, um, he won't he won't let a bait out and so balsa can be lighter it could be denser um and that's what accounts for the crazy differentials in action of handmade baits and balsa baits very good. same bait same shape just different floatability and all that hello eric i'm gonna give you an a plus tonight you did an excellent job thank you man people are digging fiberglass covering Jute if we long. could maybe it is Wrap this yes. up. I would like we're, to. We're doing it. I would like to, perhaps decide on a date. Yes. For the, for the auction, if you'd like to join and, and offer some, base. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ideally, I would like to do it next week, Monday the fifth. Oh God! But I don't I'm also I time, but I'm going to try. All right, we're doing it. The fifth next week, Monday <laughs> is the Swamoff Crush auction. Well, I might not have a lot, but I'll try. And by the way. Is there anything else you want to add? No, man. That's this was fun. I got to talk Good about job. crankbaits. Thanks everybody to... for hanging out with us tonight. Next week, the fifth will be the Smallmouth Crush live auction. It's going to be a long night. <laughs> the phone call was great. Wave it currents was. and ice. Thanks for calling in. Absolutely. Is Jimmy Big Time going to be there for the auction? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. People want to know. Well, I just we just picked the date. So. <laughs> One minute ago, Eric. So. <laughs> well, I don't know if you had talked no. to him. Like, you're going to yeah. do this winter auction, Jimmy. Would you be willing no. to come back? No. Hella, um, hella bass. Um, what kind of stuff? A lot. Travis. Yeah, a, lots. A lot. Travis generally has, like, jigs, crankbaits, topwater. I mean, I don't think there's a category he doesn't touch. Rods, no. reels, right? No. Um, uh, what do you guys want to see from me? Hmm. I mean, because 
generally I tried to throw in some premium stuff, but I know it's and, it's like and for I those mean, that by the way, it's right before Christmas. Is it is this a good time to have an auction, guys, or not a good time, time to have an auction? Okay, excellent. Travis says it's an excellent time because he needs because the GI. You need the Kung Fu GI Joe for freaking coal. You told me. We, that's a joke from, we that's a, joke from product, a movie, by the way. We that's move the product movie. on the auctions regardless. Like, I've taken some hits. I don't, like. So here's what happens if you guys haven't seen an auction. I'm going to have a list it's going to be lot one lot two lot three and i lay it all out on the floor here and we pick up lot one and i tell you what it is lot one is 20 dirty jigs yeah football jigs in half ounce various colors then what i like to do is is on my spreadsheet i'll put a price i'll be like what's the least amount that makes sense to sell this product you know this these jigs for and i'll say you know, 20 bucks when it might retail for 80, we'll start at $20. And then the viewers come in, there's a little bit of lag between uh, the comments and what we see sometimes. So we take a little while and basically we wait till the bid starts to slow down. So let's say it gets up to 35, then someone will jump in and do 36 and there might be a little bidding war for a second or two. And then we call it pretty quick. 40 bucks goes to, you know, Joe Weber. And uh, and then Joe then pays either Venmo or PayPal, and then he sends me a message, an email that says, "This is Joe. I won lot one for sixty-five dollars. I paid through PayPal. Here's my address." And then what happens is the next morning I get up and I literally pack up everything and ship it out that same day, and uh, it's pretty smooth. I I rarely um. Don't get paid or have communication issues. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Now we've had some interesting uh, auctions. Are a lot of fun. I, I enjoy the auction night. It's it's fun. Slumpy Grumpy wants me to auction off that frozen tequila Vision One Ten. What's the Ooh. asking price? What's the what? What are they going for on eBay? I would take one. I would buy it from you right now. What, what's that mean? What's your offer? I'd give you 40 bucks for it. Fuck that shit. <laughs> That's good, Slump. We should, we should see if Alex can come back to... Uh, Sean, South Jersey, are you guys for real with the 200, 300? That's crazy. For real? Probably. Uh, Ken, Ken, the problem is I probably won't get that auction together until that following weekend. So that list will be... Uh, the list will probably be done Holy shit. Monday. Holy shit. 300 on fit. Did, did they get it, Sean? God damn. That's crazy. Yes, Tom. I still have that one from Lakeside. In fact, I caught a bunch of fish on it this back in August. But you know, if I pulled out the, the Vision 110 box, there's probably some rare ones in here. Here's a limited color, Vision 110. And let's see. Oh, it's the down eye version. Let's see what year that was. Mm. Look at that limited color, 110. Ooh, that's sexy, brother. Limited. Sometimes it has the date on it. But it's the down eye version. Who is a Vision 110 freak that knows what the... Look at this deadly black illusion. Down eye mm. version. Yeah. Mm. God damn, son. Mint, too. Mm. Uh, no, not mint. I think I threw it. Sorry. I got to get out the boxes. Who knows what this color is? Supposedly a small mouth freaking killer. Who knows that one? I You're a 110 it. freak. Who knows that color? Keep it up longer. Oh, sorry. I don't need any more OG 110s, South Jersey. Orange belly. I yep. What's that color? <laughs> Slumpy Grumpy wants me to use the magnifying glass. Oh, man. You haven't pulled that on in a while. <laughs> I haven't. I only like did it once. But anyway, there's a bunch of ones. Uh, but I don't know if I'll let those go. Down eye version. It's the down eye. 
Ja, 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 ja. Anyhow, small mouth uh, David Brown. Did anybody? Yes. YMC. You got it, JP. You were close. <laughs> anyway, there you go. This was fun. It's YMC. You're right. All right, guys. Next week, JP? December 5th, 8 o'clock, we'll have the auction. Holy crikey, up. mate. What? No, I said holy crikey, mate. Yeah. All right, real quick, Eric. You mentioned uh, the balsa, the shortage of balsa, and the windmills. Uh, yes. Wind. Yes. Wind power. Yes. I just want you to be aware. Just saying. Just keep in mind. Knowing that this is going to change my life? Yes. How? They are setting us up for wind. <laughs> they want us to use wind. Because they okay. know in 2040, when, when the vapor canopy returns, there will be zero <laughs> wind. There's zero wind. And we'll be screwed. They'll come out of their underground uh, facilities, and they're going to introduce okay. all new technology as if it's brand okay. new. Who's coming out of the underground? The deep state. How many people? About. I, there's no way to tell. It, a hundred? It's in the thousands. Thousands. They're, where are they living now? Uh, like Domestically? They're here. Yeah. They are? Uh, they're with us right now. Not for long. About 15 more years, they're going to seal that up. Does anybody live under my house? Oh, yeah. You think? Oh, right. there's somebody below me. That's yeah. the noise I've been hearing. It's the, Hey, I caught two squirrels today and relocated them. <laughs> Did you? They've been chewing on my furniture. Yeah. You didn't have a hard oh. trap. I didn't shoot them. Mm. Slumpy Grumpy, you said they're going to, 2040, the vapor layer is disappearing? The vapor canopy yeah. will, will actually come back. 17, so 77. There will be no wind, Eric. There's no wind no under wind. the vapor canopy. Nope. Okay. What if in 2040... How, how are those windmills going to do then? What are you going to do when your predictions don't come true? Impossible. It's You're that sure? <laughs> Absolutely. 100%. I got it. So this is your new god. Uh, you, you found a new religion. God? No, you found a new religion. I it's, you, sound, religion. You, you, sound, you sound like a disciple. If you, you think the chronological like, order of this earth and everything that's taken place. Did you say chronological? It's and just chronological. To take place, it's just chronological. If you think that's a god, then is that, you're I did, absolutely did I say? Did I, did I say that? I, I said you found a new god. You, oh. you sound like a disciple that's following one man. Huh. You've become part of his collective now. Maybe I have. You now are you're now an extremist. I wouldn't call it extreme. Facts aren't it, extremist. Facts, but can you prove them? Absolutely. Okay. I can one. take you back in in a mathematical equation and show you exactly how everything sets up. <laughs> I'm not that good at math, but okay. maybe you could do a <laughs> you could could you do a whiteboard session for us? At, at some point, I possibly could. You're killing me, dude. It, <laughs> listen, are you you're not serious right now, right? I bought the vapor canopy, absolutely 100. You bought the vapor canopy? Does that have anything to do with vaping? <laughs> <laughs> have you been vaping tonight? <laughs> All right, guys. Next week, December 5th, 8 p.m. is the auction. I look forward to seeing everybody there. And 2040 is the vapor canopy, so don't buy any windmills or invest in that it's technology to be caught. 2040, I'll be 77. If I'm still alive, you'll be able well, I better be do alive. some le I better do some legendary lakes tours before then. Yes. I gotta get busy. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. <laughs> Please. All right, right, guys. And as always, until next time. We'll see you under the vapor barrier. Guys, we'll <laughs> At least there's no wind under the vapor canopy. Oh, canopy. Yeah, right. canopy. I, right. I'll get it right. right. I'll get Have it. Have a right. good night, right. guys. Right. <laughs>